Hello, hello again, everybody. Zag Attack is here with the Attack Sports for this Monday, November the 10th, 2014. I've ever had a great weekend in sports. I guess an interesting weekend in sports. Let's kick things off with my thoughts and the results of Week 10 of the NFL this week. Let's kick these off with again the Cinderella Kids. Known as the Lions, pulled it off again. Another come from behind victory. As they, of course, got a last second touchdown in the fourth quarter with 30 seconds left to make it a 2013 victory. Or 2016 victory, should I say, against the Miami Dolphins. Now, I missed a bit of the Lions game. I watched the fourth quarter. I was. Making up an improv class that I missed the week before. So, or a couple weeks before. So I had to make up a class and I went to that improv class yesterday. So I missed a little bit of the Lions game. But I saw the ending of the game where we had a post-class hangout at a local bar called the Imperial in Ferndale. And uh, saw the Lions were getting the offense going up. And the field goals kept coming. But then, of course, the last second touchdown. But in my mind, the Lions, this could be a problem for them. If they don't solve this. Because they cannot just rely on getting the comeback victory every time. It's going to be a burden for them. Because it's going to be. It's been the same ending for the last three weeks. The last three games. You know. The Saints game. The Falcons game. And this game. The last three games of comeback victories. You know what I mean? It could be a burden. They rely on it too often. Like they. I don't want them to be losing in a game. Like oh we'll come back. And then it doesn't happen. They need to be. A strong team, every fucking play, not just when they need to to win the game last second. But other games, including those Cowboys, following the two-game losing streak, got back in the game in London with a 31-17 victory over Jacksonville. Buncles destroyed the Raiders, 41-17. Four Niners defeated Saints in overtime in a thrilling overtime victory, 27-24, with the field goal. Cardinals beat the Rams. Despite losing, Carson Palmer, the quarterback, got injured. I love the uh, touchdown victory by Brown after Carson Palmer got injured, but they still survived 31-14. to Other games included the Seahawks with four touchdown passes for Ma to Marshawn Lynch, defeating the Giants 38-17. In speaking, speaking of a massacre, if you are a regular viewer of my show, I have some of my favorite teams. The Broncos is one of my favorite teams. Pats is. And the Lions are starting to get around them, even though I live in Michigan. But one of my favorite teams is the Chicago Bears. Today, I think all Bears fans can agree with me on this one. We all fear in Bears to be Bears fans today. After seeing last night's game, my mom's a Packer fan, and she's probably happy as fuck. 55-14. 45 zip plus half. Fire Cutler. I'm sorry. Fire everybody right now. You have a Bears fan. I turned it off after the second quarter. It was embarrassing. And this is in Lambo, by the way. One of the biggest rivalries. One of the most historical rivalries. And the Packers swept the Bears. They beat them in Chicago a few weeks ago. And it could have been the Bears' revenge game because they beat him in Lambo last year without Jay Cutler. But here's the thing. Packers were without Aaron Rodgers. Well, Aaron Rodgers said, well, you missed me last time. Well, I'm back, motherfucker. And boy, oh boy, he's sick it to the Bears. Big night for Jordy Nelson. Big night for the Bears. Two straight games of losing by 50 points. They lost in a 48 slaughter for the Pat. And there's a sad point. They lost to the Pats in a slaughter two weeks ago. And they come from a bye week to get squashed from the Packers. Well, this the Bears season is over, so go Lions. <laughs> you know what I mean? The Bears are sucking this season. And the playoff chances are hopeless. You know what I mean? There's been tension for the last couple of weeks. You know, tension's boiling over. Someone's going to get fired. I guarantee it. Somebody's going to get fired over the Bears' loss against the Packers. And Bear, and that's E M B E A R A S S I N G. Embarrassing Bears. Fuck off, man. I'll cheer on the Lions. That's how bad they are right now. They make me cheer the Lions. Anyway, 
On with the other sporting news, including uh, UFC. Now, there was two UFC cards over the weekend. Now, I have not seen the fight night yet against Shogun and St. Pru. I uh, had a gig Saturday night, so I didn't watch it. I DVR'd it. I haven't seen it yet. But I heard there was a controversial finish in the main event. That's all I've heard. But there was another fight card on the Fight Pass. I do have Fight Pass now. Which is the, the equivalent of WWE Network minus the pay-per-view streaming. Only just exclusive events they stream, including the UFC fight night this past Friday in Sydney. Headlined by a big match between Rock Hold, Luke Rock Hold, and Michael Bisbee. It was a uh, very physical main event, which ended with a vicious submission victory. Like, Rock Hold got like a side kick on the back of Bisbee. Nailed the kick, drove Michael Bisbee down for the ground and pound to set up for a submission in the victory for Luke Rock Hold. And that was a vicious choke there and a vicious fight in the main event. Cold main event was uh, the British guy, another British guy in the cold main, Ross Pearson taking on Al Iacrinta. And Pearson did not look good against this Al guy. And that's Al guy in the TKL victory in the second one. Punk, that was a big punch, man. That was a big performance by Al Iacrinta. Vicious fight from him. And I love that TK also. It was a vicious, interesting card. This past Friday in America, it was Saturday in Australia, since they're a day behind. But still, I got to see that card. I'm still going to see the UFC Fight Night card from Fox Sports 1 from this Saturday. I'll probably watch it in the next couple days. Now, let's get on wrestling. First things first, TNA. Of course, this past Thursday, Bobby Roode, the new TNA champion, defended his first title defense against MVP. I'm spilling a turn for Bobby Lashley's baby face. Because he was kind of pissed that MVP lobbied for him to get a title shot instead of Lashley getting a rematch against Bobby Roode. So, we'll see how that goes. But we do have a uh, number one contender for the tag team title. That tournament final was last week. Good final between Joe and uh, low-key team up against the eventual winners, the Hardys. Then we have another match between the Hardys and the Wolves. With no T3D involved this time for the tag team titles. They had a great tag team title match back at Destination X. But with this whole James Storm thing, this whole James Storm trying to convert one of the uh, Wolves, I think it's Davian, to the Revolution. He wanted an he wants an answer this week. So we'll see what goes down this Wednesday on Impact. But before then, time to get on down to see what goes down on Wall tonight. It's Wall Preview time, of course. This is the second to last wall before Survivor Series. We are in London today. So they've already taped it since the time since the, the time delay. The time difference. So let's get on down with the top three questions that must be answered today on wall. Question number three. Where we'll go down with Rusev, your new US champion. Now, of course, to entice more people to use the free month of November for WWE for new subscribers for the network. Of course, the network is free for the entire month of November for the new subscribers. They use an opportunity to entice people to subscribe for free with a Rusev, Rusev Sheamus match for the US Championship following all this past month in the network. I thought it would be something screwy, a DQ or a count out, because I did not want Rusev to lose on the network or win on the network, but he did win the United States Championship on the network. Kind of enticing, but I, I said on my review last week of Wall, it should have been on Wall, not on the network. That's just my opinion. But having an anti American Rusev being US champion could add things, make, make things a lot more interesting and make US championship kind of more worth than it is now. It's worthless comparison to the IC championship. It's kind of a C list title. Some people are saying we tied the title since Rusev's anti American. Make it the Russian title. No, 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 no. That should not happen, though. But no matter what happens, Rusev's the new U.S. champion. See what happens with him. He may grant Sheamus rematch. I don't know if it's at Survivor Series or on Water Night. We'll see. At least it'll be on wall. Question number two. Where do new matches be made for Survivor Series? Uh, we're about two weeks away from this pay-per-view. We only have two matches. Of course, the big main event which I'll get to in a minute, in the Divas title match with Nikki Bella taking on AJ. Now, we're still waiting for a couple more traditional Survivor Series matches. I said it 
couple weeks ago. Since Brock Lesnar's not gonna fight again until probably January. No, that was kayfabe news. I, I I read some fake story that he lost the title to Kofi Kingston in a house show. That's a fake news story, by the way. Um, because what my friends told me that I was like, that's kayfabe news. That's fake. Um, since Lesnar's not fighting till Royal Rumble, they could take the advantage of the Survivor Series by having more than one Survivor Series match. They're gonna have like a couple. They're not going to have a Divas one. They may have a Divas one. But if AJ's not going to captain it, maybe Paige will captain it. Against Brie Bella. Unless Brie has to accompany Nikki. Because of the whole 30 days of personal assistant thing that she had to agree to after losing at Hell in a Cell. So we'll see what new matches get added tonight. But the big match, of course, the big main. Will we finally get some more new people on Team Cena and Team Authority? Now, as of this moment, it's supposed to be a five-man team against a five-man team. Two guys are in each team right now, and I predicted it both. Team members for both teams. John Cena and uh, Dom Ziggler. Kane and Wallens. Now, tonight, John Cena is slated to take on Ryback. I don't know why they're doing that. You know, Ryback's coming off a comeback. He's getting momentum again. When he viewed him with Cena, he was never the same. His babyface push, everything went away. But this could be a ploy to get right back on either Team Authority or Team Cena. That's my guarantee. My prediction is right back will join a team tonight. He will join either Team Authority or John, C John Cena's team, depending on what happens tonight in the main event of War tonight at 8, 7 Central on Spike TV. Uh, used to be on Spike TV, but now it's on USA Network. So it'd be interesting being in London now. I like London crowds for both companies. And Tina and the redo London shows the both fun shows because crowds are interested. And that is it for the attack sports for this day. Thank you very much for watching. See you later tonight for my wall review. With that in mind, y'all been attacked by the sports news from Zach. See you later, yeah.